Hello and welcome back to Rebound with Resilience, a podcast dedicated to raise your resilience, mindset and mental wellness. On our second episode with SafePod at Queenstown, to deep dive into the topic of empathy, we are joined by a very passionate and empathetic lady. She is the Executive Director of Lions Befrienders, Karen B. Hi, thank you Kevin for introducing myself and welcoming us to this interesting podcast. Yes, it's just we have the same surname as well. Definitely. Right? More same than shirt. That. Yes. Same colour. Alignment. <laughs> okay. Definitely. Your empathy is something that I'm very passionate about as well. And I'm looking forward because I think Lions Befrienders, it's all about empathy. It's all about befriending people who are socially isolated and that requires a lot of empathy. Uh, I think in a while I'll ask you to share about your work, but also I know you're instrumental in setting up SafePod at Queenstown. Right, I think every approach to Lions be friends. Could you share a bit more about the process? What was your role there and just very succinctly? So SafePod is about mental wellness. Yeah. Um, and we want to advocate that it's okay not to be okay. Sure. To come forward to seek help or to get someone to speak with you when you need it. Okay. And not keep quiet and let things escalate. Now we are fortunately um, appointed to lead the SafePod uh, coalition. And with that Many helping hands come together. One is using technology itself from LB, uh, mm. artificial intelligence technology. Yep. And then specialists like the counsellors on site and on hand, we have 300 counsellors from our other partner yep. shing, um, partnering organisations. We have medical institutions like the hospitals that in case of um, severity, we are able to escalate up. And most importantly, we also have para counsellors and wellness befrienders coming in from the lay people like people's yep. association as well as some other agencies it's many helping hands approach and we want it really from the wellness befrienders residents from queenstown yeah that means uh, we want to advocate it's okay not to be okay and when you turn around left and right there is someone yeah. there for you for sure in fact i know i did also a video comparing kids and adults responses to mental health questions and also featuring one of your befrienders uh, jody uh, if you haven't checked it out, do the link is below. Do do check it out uh, if you want to know more about SafePod. But like I said, something that I've seen overseas, I've always thought it'd be nice to have it in Singapore. We have a dental vents in schools, but why not having a mental wellness van becomes nominalized? People don't see it as a stigma. Mm-hmm. So great work. But today's topic, you know, we're going to talk about empathy. You know, which is you know kind of very related to what uh, befrienders need to have if they go out there. Um, but before that, I would also like to ask. Right, on a more of a personal basis, could you share a story? I know you've been in the social service over a decade, right, leading various fronts, and you've probably seen a lot, spoken to a lot of people. Uh, can you share one story maybe that has deeply impacted you in your years of service? Um, there are several stories. Okay. Huh? I'll just come with <laughs> one from Life sure. Defender and one from The Journey. So I started my journey about 35 years ago okay. in um, volunteerism. And incidentally, first point of uh, contact was uh, not just with the church but because they had some mission going into Woodbridge Hospital Mm. which was the precursor of your Institute for Mental Health Mm. Um, that's something that really up to today strikes me and left a lasting memory empathy means basically you are able to put yourself in their position Mm. and you regard them as human beings Mm. and at that point in time uh, I saw the transition from Woodbridge where it was like a cage prison like octopus uh, structure mm. to now the IMH. I've not been back there for a few years. Um, all I, but now the conditions are much better yep. and there's higher security because it's a protection for staff and everything. Sure. So being empathy means empathetic means that you must put yourself in the position mm. of who you see, whether it's a cleaner, whether it's someone who may not be in the best of health, emotionally, um, mentally, etc. Try to understand and being curious what happened to them and what are the underlying causes. Mm. Most importantly, listen. Got it. This no are, judgment. Sure, you definitely deep dive in these things later, right? But the second story you wanted to share? Okay, yeah. the second story very much is from Lions Befrienders. And Lions Befrienders, um, as you know, we serve seniors. There is this case of um, Madam Veronica Ang. Mm. So she had severe eczema and it was very, very painful because as you know, eczema is like a living hell. So for that, um, our staff, Marie, has gone all the way out 
to not just clean the house, but becoming as good as her own mm. daughter, um, going the extra mile to take care of her, um, get her groceries done, make sure that she uh, she is able to settle in the house very, very calmly. Mm. Another, another senior that we know is a lonely senior, a divorcee, and um, also as a son, I think, who committed suicide. Okay. Um, she has been quite a recluse until we managed to get her out. Mm. So I think helping her to uh, come out of a shell, readjust back to community, find friends, it is kudos to the team. I love it how you link everything back to our topic, right? Oh. <laughs> but it is everything is kind of linked because um, it, it takes empathy to acknowledge and realize that it's a segment of society that we cannot see sometimes hidden underneath the cracks. You know, recently I, I also did a video where I went in Jalan Kuko. It's one of one room flats, and a lot of them elderly are staying alone, you know, neglected by their kids, and it's very heartbreaking. Very heartbreaking to see, and so like the work that you are doing warms my heart because you're befriending seniors, you're allowing them to participate, encouraging them to be involved socially, so that in their twilight years, you know, at least there's some meaning instead of recluse, instead of just closing up, which is so sad, right? Um, okay, thanks so much for sharing. I think audience will kind of get a sensing of who you are, you know, and what you stand for. I guess now we can go into the, the outline and the focus, right? But we're going to talk about what's empathy. Uh, how do we create it what are the barriers to it mm. uh, why is it important I think empathy is something we all heard like in school you say I must have empathy for other people but I think we don't really deep dive into it and realise how fundamental empathy is into our lives so this is exactly what we're going to do in the next 20 minutes uh, let's start with defining empathy what is empathy? so for us empathy is to be able to understand and put ourselves in the person's uh, shoes look at things from their lens. Mm. With that, you are able to see things differently and perhaps make less judgment. And that's important because, especially in Singapore, we are a very fast-paced society. Yeah. Um, we do not, in a way, we do not um, pity or um, we move ahead, we raise ahead. Yeah, we don't, we, don't pause pause we don't pause to consider things. Yeah. And also we don't pause to pull the others along. So it's very much, uh, it's COVID, but COVID has shown a little bit better side of Singaporeans. Mm. Um, Singaporeans are actually stopping to help other people. Um, like for example, putting ourselves in the shoes of the foreign workers, being far away from home and uh, having a COVID situation. So that, that's the other thing. Of course, um, mental health is also affecting everybody. So nowadays it's okay to say that you need help. Mm. And also it's good that COVID COVID, while it is a disruptor, he has brought in a lot of opportunities for us to reimagine yeah. the future, for us also to transform and change mindset. Yeah. Because it's shaken us out from what our structure is yeah. and our shell. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I relate to that a lot, you know, especially during COVID, it's like a stressor. And because of the stressor, there's adaptation. And one thing we realise is how important connection is. You know, and if I were to kind of define empathy myself, mm. I would say a relatable definition is simply being connected to your own heart and by extension, being able to connect with others. That's empathy, just pausing to consider the matters of the heart, right? Not just the mind and the intellect. And also, I think if you want a research definition of empathy, there are three aspects generally you can think about, right? One is cognitive empathy, like you said, thinking about why the person's doing certain things, what's behind them. You know, there is affective empathy. Affect means emotions. So empathy is not just about the mind thinking. It's also about feeling and connecting. And then finally, you have compassionate empathy, right, which is what you all do. You know, you, you, you look at someone and say, you know, they need help. I'm going to go out there and extend help to them. That is an element of support, element of action. That's compassionate empathy. I think a brief analogy I can give is when, for example, if someone is, um, I got this from somebody, I borrowed it from someone. So he said that if imagine you are in a, um, maybe I ask you, right, Karen, if let's say you are in a jungle, maybe you do hiking, okay, and then all of a sudden you, f you fall and you sprain your ankle. You sprain your ankle, huh? and then your, your partner next to you says, oh, you know, Karen, oh, I'm so, I, I, I'm so sorry you, you actually um, fell down, you know, I think you must be feeling, you must be thinking, you know, it's, it's such a bad situation. You might be feeling very bad. Right? He said, I'm so sorry for you. And he just, he just that's all he does. <laughs> right? That's all he does. 
right? But you, what will be your reaction? I was like, can you just come and help me yeah. and stop saying so much? Yeah. So, <laughs> I appreciate the words, but yeah. I like the action part sure. more. Sure. How are you going to get me out of here? So it does show a certain reality, right? Yeah. I mean, definitely you know, a combination of all three is important. Like, you definitely want them to also empathize with you, at the same time support you emotionally while providing you that physical support in that situation. I think that's what the combination is, what makes empathy effective. Uh. So it's something I can think about. Okay, let's move on. Like, why do you think in your own life and just in the lives of Singaporeans, uh, why is empathy important? Yeah. Okay, empathy traditionally has always been important, yeah. but COVID it made the situation worsened, um, because for us, especially in um, children, we we also see the huge decline in uh, mental wellness. Yeah. So um, empathy becomes more important because if they seek help, for example, and they they go to the counsellors and what should the friend say? Shouldn't be like, ooh, what, you know, <laughs> why is this with uh, yeah. the adult and seeking help? So basically, we're trying to make sure there's no judgment. So what we also upfront is we also lead them aside um, to do uh, special sessions, I mean, special talking, etc. And we cannot come on too strong because uh, we also need, if it's really a counselling session, we do need the parental uh, approval. So what we can do is to befriend them as we talk to them, find out. Because... Some of them are under stress. They don't want the parents to know. So yeah. it could be parental issues uh, coming from families. Then as we moved, we realized that empathy is even more important um, as they get older. Mm. Because children have ideation. The suicides start coming in the youth section in the mm. secondary school. That's where we realized that actually having so many going through the screening, um, few really want to come forward. Mm. But we do pick up and then we also invite them separately. Um, without under without the glare um, away from yeah. their friends etc so this is more of like in a safe part setting the school is also yeah. involved to ensure that you know classmates are empathetic towards people who need help right. what about general society someone listening to this say I'm not a student anymore I'm in a working force you know why is empathy important for them or even in a family situation okay empathy is very important because first of all it promotes harmony mm. I think that's key um, secondly it makes sure that your environment is set up. So like what you have yeah. correctly pointed, in terms of uh, re empathy, there is cognitive, there is the emotional part, mm. and there is the compassionate yeah. com uh, aspect. Now, for a society to be gracious, to let you feel at home, to be welcoming, you need the environment to be ready and ripe, um, mm. and also warm. For okay. warm to take place, you definitely need empathy, mm. and it's a, it's a precursor to a lot of things. Yeah. Because with empathy, for example, um, not just in school, but in the workplace, with empathy, first, there's harmonious relationship. Mm -hmm. From a commercial stance, business stance. Yeah, there's resilience as well. Yes, resilience. There's teamwork. Correct. Yeah. So ultimately, if let's say the business owners are also thinking of profits and yeah. dollars, yeah. it does lead to oh, for productivity. Sure. Yes. Yeah. But what it matters most is uh, empathy is... We don't want cases of uh, loss of life, mm. loss of life, or basically even people going to depression, people of having suicidal thoughts. Yeah. Itself, it's, it's um, what do you call it? If you don't attend to it, it has other full repercussions, not yeah. just on that person, but the family Wider and the community. Yes. And the burden of mental health care is so very great. Yes. Yeah. So, there's, so do it early in terms of prevention mm. rather than intervention. Okay. So... Empathy is uh, key for all these things. So if it's a ground, uh, it's like a nurturing ground to help like to, to make the soil kind of fertilised and well. I, I love the analogy, by the way. I'm going to borrow it from now if you don't mind. <laughs> you know how... Because it is, it's really setting the stage for flourishing to take place. People don't realise, very underrated. Whether it's in a class setting, like you said, or whether it's in a work setting, uh, having people who care for each other, who love each other, who can see each other's needs and support one another. It's a precursor to productivity. It's a precursor to resilience, uh, to so many things. I always give an analogy. If you can have the best seed, the seed with a lot of potential, but if you put it in a soil and you don't, that is barren or that has no water, no matter how much potential the seed has, it's not going to grow. So the environment is super underrated. And empathy, like you said, sets the environment up for success or the way we define it. 
So I, I love that. Uh, I mean, for me, uh, I think you almost covered all the points I wanted to mention. You know, people think empathy is just about sitting and crying for someone, which which I don't deny. That's one aspect of it, being able to comfort. But empathy is also being able to read situations, right? being able to act and make decisions. If, whether you're a business leader, whether you are a student trying to think of what questions your teachers were set for the exam, <laughs> or maybe what helps your grades in uni, then having empathy to understand what they're looking out for, yeah, it's going to help you, you know? And, and so it's very relevant. I don't know why people, that's why I, okay. Empathy is also very important, especially nowadays. Um, it has always been a very important in terms of your EQ. Mm. So 20, 30 years ago, the shift has been away from IQ mm. to EQ. So if you look at it from a very um, practical sense, especially because Singaporeans are practical people, EQ will get you far ahead. IQ only gets you through the door. Mm. So with that, um, these are the concerns that uh, we should have okay. empathy. Yeah. Great. Okay, let's move on to how to develop it, right? What are some barriers first to empathy? So for the barriers to empathy will be um, indifference and also prejudice. Mm. This is our greatest concern that we have. The mind, okay, how it happens is because I think um, the environment in which they grew up perhaps did not have the empathy. So, like for example, racial uh, intolerance is also a big issue. Empathy and also indifference, for example, you see someone being bitten up by the streets and you just walk past. So I'm very, very thankful that recently uh, you have this beach road. Case, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So a lot of people, although like 40 people are standing, only 10, yeah, yeah. 25% went on to help. Yeah, you know? Okay. Um, so I think that means basically is you think of others. You don't think. Yeah. Uh, basically, you care for other people. Yeah, I think bias is a huge barrier yeah. Um, yeah. To, to empathy. And I think bias is very difficult to address because it, it kind of threatens. Um, I give a bit of research to yeah. this. Right? I think it was a book that I read on negotiating the unnegotiable. I think it was a former... Uh, I'll link it up because I forgot the name. Uh, but he was uh, someone that he talks about how when negotiating, it's important to understand people's identity. And identity is made up of this acronym BRAVE, uh, B-R-A-V-E, which essentially stands for your beliefs, your rituals, your allegiances, who are loyal to, your values, as well as your emotional experiences. You know, So for example, if I face mental health issues before, I'm going to feel more strongly for that. And he, and he says that when someone else, we're in a conversation with someone, you know, we face a situation where these any aspect of our identity, any aspect of the BRAVE is being threatened or is being challenged, we actually feel fit threatened. It's a evolutionary response that we feel our survival being threatened. Mm. And that's why we have this this emotional reaction to just shut down, to just say that us ah, it's me against you, your values are different from me. I feel threatened by it. And because of that, it's, it's, a, it's a huge barrier to empathy. Uh. So I just want to let audience realize that a lot of we just need to be self-aware of what our barriers are and what our values are and realize that everybody it's a compile or a cute not a compilation. It's very weird. It's a it's a nice word to use, Karen. Uh, amalgamation is it of the different aspects of your identity and to realize that we're all different mm. is one step, la, Like you said, totally agree with you. You said it very very well. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Um, let let's talk about last. Let's transition to the last uh, most important, I guess, part of the podcast, which is how we can develop empathy. Practical for steps for anyone listening. Um, so in Lies Befrienders, we use a variety. Sure. Um, there are about eight um, steps or eight areas according to the uh, psychology um, journals. One of it is about curiosity. Mm. If you're curious about the other person, you will pay attention mm. and you want to learn. So with that, you will spend time with people also and then you appreciate people for who they are. That's first thing, curiosity. Second one is step out of your comfort zone. The problem is a lot of us are boxed in and they don't want to do things uh, and they, want to make, they don't want to make new friends. Mm -hmm. This is normal. Um, so if you're not able to get out of your box, you always see things from a certain perspective and that's a biased view. When you're biased, for example, you don't really understand um, other people's uh, practice of faith, other people's perception. Yep then of course there'll be conflict because you don't seek to understand. Mm. I think there is a proverb 
seek first to, to understand. understand before being understood mm. or oh, David Stephen Covey's correct yes yeah. then the other area is um, be open to feedback because I mean you want to understand people people share about you of course you learn it and you improve yeah. I think that also is good as part of humanity we keep moving forward and the fourth one would be we walk in the shoes of others that one's very common yeah, sense we, uh, we, we. I think we, we, get, we get ingrained in it already. <laughs> CCE program, no better work in other people's shoes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one is, um, the other one is examine your own biases. Okay, So what when, I mentioned earlier. Yeah. So that's the link part. The other one is for us is read widely if you can, mm. okay? Um, and also join a shared course. Mm. It's, I think it's important. For, so for example, like yeah. you've been doing this podcast for mm. other people so that other people can also learn and can advocate yeah. more. I think that's very, very meaningful. Oh, for sure. So. Yes, deepen my empathy massively, you know. I think I... Pardon me for cutting off. Is that all? You share? Okay, okay, thanks, Karen. So I just want to add on to that. You mentioned about um, being open to learn and reading widely. I think beyond reading, if audio or visual mm. appeals to you, then go and watch videos, features documentaries of people with different lives right people telling stories I think Singapore like our grandfather's story is one local one that does it uh, any millionaires of Singapore is another uh, of course overseas uh, CNA uh, CNA always runs features I think they won they ran one where it's highly um, praised about the lives of people in prison mm. yeah so that's something you can also check out because when we do that when we immerse ourselves immersion uh, right? one way of empathy is immersion when we immerse ourselves uh, into the lives of other people we see things a bit differently, mm. you know, and that of course begins with curiosity. Yeah, so it's very powerful. And I think I'm not sure whether you conduct sessions where I'm sure you, you're open to volunteers. Yeah, yeah. appreciate that. <laughs> I'll come and help you. Will survive without yeah. the volunteers. Yeah. Help. So if you immerse yourself in experiences like this, you 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 go and you volunteer with different. Of course, links below. You know, you can if you're inspired by Karen's, uh, uh, you know, sharing and a heart. I mean, definitely consider volunteering it. Lions befrienders reaching out to seniors. I'm sure they learn a lot, especially if you're in between. You know, you have nothing much to do. Um, we welcome all ages and um, just to share. Yeah. We also have moved to um, receiving volunteers as young as 13. Right. Um, wow. But that's only for our centre base, so they come okay. in. Um, and in the program, it's not just them volunteering; they also learn, because some of them actually, you know, the younger generation yeah. uses a lot of text. Mm. Um, they, they don't know how to communicate uh, at people in the eye so there's examples. training as well yes. right? non-verbal training right. befriending okay wow yeah I think all these things really do help you covered actually what I wanted to talk about right which is immersion really being open to people's stories like putting yourself in situations where you step out of your comfort zone to serve to be curious uh, and I also wrote down here observing listening and questioning which, you know, instead of looking at things on the surface and judging, it's very easy, right? No, it is very easy. I think society is primed for negativity, right? Like negative news sell. And it's easy to look at people queuing up for like maybe the Speedmaster, right? You know, the recent watch, the Omega watch. Recently, there was this hoo-ha and then people very easy jive. Why you queue up so long for this thing? Why you queue up one whole day just for a watch, right? But of course, I'm not defending the people who are few entitled, who are... You know, they're just to flip for a profit and, you know, argue for the sake of it. I'm talking about those that maybe genuinely love watches and they're willing to spend half a day to queue up. We might easily judge them and say, oh, it's just a watch. But if you go deeper, like you said, right? And if you ask and question, why do people, why do watches, you know, relate to people? Why is it a, a vessel for people's expression? Why are people willing to spend so much money on watches? You know, there has to be a reason. And if you go deep into it, right? you realize that, hey, actually it depends your empathy. You know, you find out a lot of things that you wouldn't actually do. Like, for example, for me, why do I buy a watch? Because, you know, it's the same color as my um, logo. And the logo is actually, the colors mean something. And this is like kind of a milestone and a reminder to me um, for certain, uh, and also an expression. It's also to express myself. So, uh, sorry I brought that up, but it's just to show that, um, you know, a lot of questions when you ask, like, why is this person acting a certain way? Or what are they struggling with that we cannot see? What are their values and beliefs? It helps. Maybe also, um, to end it off, I also like to share um, some personal encounter. And this one is also for um, the viewers. Um, empathy, I think it really has to begin from home. 
Um, and also share the story because nowadays a lot of uh, younger generation, I think you upload all your posts, mm. your diagrams, your drawings, etc. Either to share. Um, the problem is I think uh, some of the viewers are quite cynical. So I had my, my daughter posted up. She's only 12. Mm. And I think one remark brought her to tears. And I think immediately she tore up art pieces. So we had to remove her or to drop her account. Was it a TikTok account? I, I think mm. it was a uh, Discord. Mm. So, um, okay, but we, so th- then we investigated because it was during a lunch, a uh, family lunch. She was massively and furiously uh, WhatsApping. So we took it away. Then her brother found out that actually because she posted the artwork and somebody was commenting it was very bad and it's like mm. ugly and etc. So she, because she likes art. So that affected her. It was immediate reaction. You could see the world, the, like basically her world has collapsed. So the thing is, um, how, how do I put it? Okay, so then we told her that technically, and then she also entered into argument on the Discord. So we removed her completely. Mm. Uh, but before she she removed or exited, she did uh, apologize. We said do a proper apology, do a closure. And when she apologized that technically for misbehavior and uh, lashing out, um, the other party also said she apologised for um, criticising negatively, very badly. Primarily, she did it only because she was angry with something else. So she took it out on the other platform. But also very nice that there were other people on the platform saying that she should, um, you know, shouldn't uh, basically uh, tear other people's work apart. So it also shows that technically, especially in social media, there's a lot of cyberbullying. Mm. And this one is very important also because in schools, including good schools, um, because these are personal cases that I've come to my knowledge, um, students actually had to go for counselling or were withdrawn because they were being told that um, they were they should not be befriended in school or because the comments were passed inside the group chat. Mm. It got to the extent the principal had to shut down. And I think... Uh, they disciplined the ones who commented. So that means that in school, it's easy for us to say all those things about empathy. Mm. But nowadays, I think even in primary school mm. as well, and also secondary school, it's taken a toll. So you can see the immediate reaction. And I, I know some of the kids, actually after going through this, they do go for um, counselling yeah. and some of them also medication. Because of course, there's other factors yeah, that yeah. also trigger them over the, le- over the edge. So down here, I would like to appeal for everybody. I think social media is a double-edged sword. It gives us connectivity to everyone, but it has to be very carefully used. In other words, don't say things that hurt others. To mm. you, it's just a post. But the, for the other receiving end person, it might actually cause the person to commit suicide, to jump down. Mm. So because, because you don't know what is the person on the other side like receiving, and it's no longer you and me in a small room. It's now you and me in the whole metaverse, in the whole internet world, yeah. whereby hundreds and thousands of people can see. So the magnified implication and impact is very scary. I think it's a good ending message. You know, I think empathy really is about also linked to kindness. Lah. Yeah. You know, just realizing that all of us are human and we all have struggles we all have things underneath that people don't see and it helps to just look beyond the surface uh, or take a second step before or rather take a second thought before any action mm. or any comment right. that we put out there whether is it face to face or whether is it online yeah and yeah do you have any final message you want to share with um, you know about SafePod about just it to, to society in general la. from your heart you want to share okay. just read two words so it's easy for especially yeah. the younger ones basically it's be nice okay <laughs> okay <That's> <laughs> short and very sweet and uh, very powerful so yeah guys and girls and ladies and gentlemen uh, we have come to the end of today's episode um, do check out um, episode one with, with uh, Eric of course and episode three that is coming up uh, we do also have um, a video that we did with SafePod so you Thank know you. it's fun you know that check it out with the kids you know answering questions and uh, definitely follow us on social media as well I'm going to link up Lions Befrienders uh, SafePod if there's any volunteer opportunities to connect with with Karen as well okay we appreciate you 
We love you and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Thank you.